Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to talk about paper. I have this series on my channel where I talk about different kinds of materials and how we use them, how they are produced, how we recycle them, how much we can recycle and how sustainable they generally are. This is a series I've made because I myself find it super difficult to make any decisions when I'm at the supermarket or when I'm trying to figure out what material is better than the other material and how much of an impact does this material have over another. There's so much information out there and so much misinformation it can be super hard to navigate. Which is why I thought it could be super cool to make this sort of content because I benefit from this because I get to do a lot of research and hopefully you benefit from this as well because you get to enjoy the research. So today it is paper. I have previously made aluminium and glass so you can go and watch those videos they are linked down below and also at the end of this video but let's get right into paper so paper is a dried compressed mat of plant fibers and the production with which we produce paper is really really old we've been making paper for a very very long time and usually we make paper from forest trees but you can actually make paper from lots of other kinds of plant materials like cotton or bamboo or hemp so usually we mix paper materials with other kind of materials to achieve a certain look or a certain aesthetic for instance a lot of magazines are either treated with a mixed material of paper and china clay or generally just plastic as well we also have products like tetra pack that is milk juice cartons stuff like that that is also not completely just paper or cardboard but it's mixed with either aluminium or with plastic we're going to talk a little bit about in this video both about paper and cardboard because they are actually rather similar one of the major differences is of course that cardboard is way thicker it's usually made out of more layers of plant fiber where paper is made out of fewer layers of plant fiber and cardboard is often also made out of more reused fibers which is why it has this characteristic gray brownish color the process with which we produce paper today is actually pretty straightforward it's so simple that you can actually make paper in your own house you take a plant and you bash it to release the plant fibers inside then you mix it with water to get this soggy consistency which is also called pulp you spread this mixture out on a wire sheet and you sort of let the fibers knit themselves together and that's how you make paper apparently i'm so going to try and make paper at home by the way because this seems like the ultimate zero waste challenge of course you also squeeze excess water away and then you dry it and then bam you have paper of course depending on what kind of purpose the paper you're making will serve you can mix it with different dyes and chemicals and bleaches and depending on what you do and what you use it will become a more or less sustainable because of that so paper is made from plants and that's great right well that depends on a lot of things a lot of trees go into the production of paper and one of the downsides of paper production is deforestation worldwide deforestation areas is estimated to be responsible for about 12 percent of greenhouse gas emissions because you know because the cool the cool thing about trees is that trees they turn carbon dioxide into oxygen but when you cut trees down there will become huge areas where that is no longer possible and that will leave more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere than previous the whole turning carbon dioxide into uh, oxygen is uh, really really important and really difficult if we keep cutting the trees down deforestation is not only connected to greenhouse gas emissions deforestation is also really really important and really crucial to understand when it comes to biodiversity and loss of habitat and monocultures it can take up to 24 trees to make one ton of office paper the Union of Concerned Scientists points out that wood products, including paper, account for about 10% of total deforestation. Yeah, there we are. Cool, 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 cool. Animal agriculture and soy production, mostly used for animal feed and palm oil production, are still the major villains when it comes to deforestation. But of course, that does not mean that we can just use paper mindlessly. So deforestation is one downside of paper production. But what else goes into this? Well, during paper production, there is a lot of water and a lot of energy used, and that also comes with a large impact. We also have to account for water pollution from chemical dyes and bleaches, which is also something that's prevalent within this industry. And 
then there's the notion of landfill. The demand for cardboard as packaging materials have made it the single largest waste product by weight in our trash. And it's estimated that over 24 million tons of cardboard is discarded every single year. Unrecycled paper and cardboard contributes to groundwater pollution and it also emits methane when it's trying to break down in landfills. The United States produced over 20 million tons of paper last year. And that amount would take around 55 to 110 million trees to produce. So, girl. We use a lot of cardboard and paper every single day. And honestly, it's one of those materials that I prefer over plastic. And I think that's the case for a lot of zero wasters and generally sustainability advocates as well. So we end up using quite a lot of it. It's generally estimated that worldwide we produce around 400 million tons of paper every single year. Of course, a lot of paper is actually recycled and we're going to talk more about that later. But there are also tons of things that we use that are made from paper or cardboard every single day that aren't recycled and that aren't even possible to recycle. And let's talk a little bit about that. I'm talking about daily commodities like toilet paper or receipts, just to name two very easy examples. Receipts waste one billion gallons of water every single year and to make them we kill over 10 million trees. To supply them we use over 250 million gallons of oil and overall receipts make up for 1.5 billion pounds of waste. One of the reasons why receipts are so wasteful is because it's mandatory in a lot of countries for shops to print out receipts. And receipts are not made from 100% paper, but it's lined with plastic, so it cannot be recycled and it cannot be composted. It's also lined with BPA, which is a hormone disruptive, and you can also find it in a lot of aluminum in cans. Then we have toilet paper. Toilet paper does not contain plastic or BPA, but bleach is very often used in toilet paper, especially virgin toilet paper. And it can actually be composted quite well when we're not flushing it down the drain. On average, over 380 trees are used to supply one person a lifetime supply of toilet paper. It takes often up to 20 years for a tree to grow big enough for paper production and we flush thousands of them down the toilet. And fun fact, toilet paper before 1935 had splinters in them. Yikes. But we use paper products in lots of other contexts as well. We have stuff like Q-tips. They often have a little paper stick or a little cardboard stick rather than a plastic one, which is sustainable, but not great and also not sustainable. Let's be 100% clear about this. Luckily, a lot of paper is recycled. The global average for paper recycling is about 58%, so a little over half. And in Europe, it's about 73%, and the recycling rate for paper in the US is about 64 So how much do we help the environment when we recycle paper? Recycling one ton of office paper saves around 17 trees, 7,000 gallons of water, and over 450 gallons of oil, three cubic yards of landfill space and enough energy to heat an average home for six months total. According to the EPA, about a third of the paper we use to make newspapers are actually made from recycled materials. And another third of that comes from waste products from lumber mills like sawdust. So from a newspaper, only about one third of that comes from virgin paper on average. Actually, we use recycled paper more as a raw material than we use wood pulp. So that's really, really nice. Every recycled ton of paper saves more than 3.3 cubic yards of landfill space. And if you measure that by weight, more paper is recovered than plastic, glass and aluminum combined. What if we had the means to do the same with all other materials? I mean, can you imagine? Wild. When we look at paper recycling, there's a few things that we should know. First of all, paper is sorted into different grades and the type of grade will determine how easy it is to recycle the product. And the grade is determined by the quality of the raw material, aka the paper. Stuff like newspapers is very low quality and therefore has a very low grade and cannot necessarily be turned into new shiny white office paper again. The reason why that is, is because the paper we use for newspapers has already been recycled a couple of times. And with every time we recycle paper, we shorten the length of the fibers that the paper is actually made out of which is why that newer virgin office paper is a higher grade and because it has a higher quality and it hasn't been reused as many times and that's why it's really important to recycle that kind of paper because it's a high quality, it's a high grade, it's a A+. When paper has been recycled about five to seven times, the fibers are so short that they cannot be recycled again. And we have to add new paper material, new raw materials into the mix in order for it to turn into a product again. 
lower grade paper does not necessarily end up as a waste product when it cannot be recycled anymore but at some point it will become unrecognizable that this product has once been recycled even once you feel because so much new paper has been added to it that it doesn't even matter anymore and they cannot call it recycled materials because hey it's like 1.1 percent giving advice on what can be recycled and what cannot be recycled can be a little bit difficult because that depends a lot on where you're from and where you live what can be is essentially what can work out for me and what can be possible for me may not be possible for you so always check with your local authorities and check with your local recycling facilities what is actually the options for you because that's way better than just listening to someone who said something on youtube anytime but i do have some of these here overall how to recycle paper and cardboard the correct way sort of tips that i hope you're going to find interesting or helpful the first one is sort your paper and cardboard into clean materials and mixes a lot of the time stuff like tetra pack like milk cartons and juice cartons cannot actually be recycled it is the case some places but for instance in denmark it's a very big no-no and we cannot do that so make sure to check where it can be recycled or if it can be recycled. If it cannot be recycled then it's probably a good idea to look out for other materials to have your milk or juice or whatnot in. I started making my own plant milk because I could not really avoid the cartons made from Tetra Pak for instance so that's an option. There's also stuff like sticky notes that also go into this category. Some places do recycle them but other places do not. Sticky notes have this cute yet yeah, little sticky part on it and that makes it for some places impossible to recycle. So make sure that you divide all your clean paper and cardboard and remove all the mixed materials and find out what your options are here. Then it's also a good idea to remove paper clips and staples. Actually, a lot of recycling facilities have machines that will remove these for you, but specifically with paper clips, like you can use them again and again. Make sure to reuse what you can reuse. Paper and cardboard that has been in touch with food is often impossible to recycle. Like greasy pizza boxes for instance. Throwing a greasy pizza box into a recycling bin will often ruin the entire batch which is too bad. Instead what you can do is that you can cut out all the greasy parts and put them in landfill and then recycle the clean parts instead. But just be mindful that cardboard and paper that has been in touch with food both in the supermarkets or takeaway or whatnot actually is often impossible to recycle and should be taken away from the recycling bin just yes also wet paper and cardboard is often unrecyclable and what you can do instead is simply just to dry it in a windowsill or on a little coat rack or like a laundry hanger or whatnot and make sure that it's completely dry before you recycle it then it should be no problem this is something that always irritates me and this is something that I fall victim to a lot myself some cardboard boxes from the frozen section is often impossible to recycle because they are actually not 100% cardboard. This is the case for a lot of food related packaging products also like coffee cups and whatnot but they are lined with plastic and sometimes this plastic is impossible to remove which makes it unrecyclable. Sometimes it is possible to remove the plastic layer from the cardboard which will make the cardboard recyclable but sometimes they're so integrated into one another that it's completely impossible. So make sure to check that before you throw it in the recycling bin and a good way of doing that is by making a corner of the box wet then you will start to see how it divides into different pieces and different materials so that's just something to be mindful of and to look out for especially when it comes to food packaging this is something that happens a lot it also happens with stuff like train tickets and movie tickets and more official types of paper that is usually laminated with a thin little layer of plastic and make sure to check that out before you throw it into the recycling bin. So what's better, paper or plastic? And that of course comes down to what kind of product we are looking at. If you're looking at paper coffee cups versus plastic coffee cups, for instance, there's a lot of stuff that goes into whether something is more sustainable than the other. If you look at CO2 emissions, a styrofoam coffee cup has the lowest impact compared to both paper and ceramics. But such statistics often fail to take more than CO2 into account. They seldom look at methane emissions, disposal and reusability. So if you have an option between a reusable paper and a plastic slash styrofoam coffee cup the reusable one is always the best option yeah i mean no kidding 
a lot of paper products come with a higher impact than plastic products. And that's because plastic is super, super lightweight and you don't need a lot of the raw material to make the product that you need. That means that you need more raw material to make a paper bag than you need to make a plastic bag. And that means that the impact or the general CO2 greenhouse gas emissions from that product naturally goes up. All the statistics I found that said this completely failed to mention microplastics, water pollution, methane, disposal, recyclability and reusability. So if we look at disposable products made from plastic or paper, it all comes down to how you use it and how you can recycle it initially. It's also about what kind of impact that product leaves behind. For instance, if you throw a paper cup into nature, it will usually just biodegrade. Whereas if you throw a styrofoam cup into nature, it will usually just degrade into tiny pieces of microplastic. And that's not sustainable at all. But generally, try not to throw stuff in nature. That would be cool for everyone. Over the last years, with sustainability becoming more and more prevalent, I've seen a lot of disposable plastic products being replaced with disposable paper products. And I'm also just here to say they are not sustainable either. I have seen it especially with stuff like utensils, cutlery, plates, cups, whatever. We have turned our plastic products into paper, cardboard or bamboo products, which is a whole other thing. And the reason why that's not ideal is because that we are using a material that takes a lot of energy and resources and time to produce. And we use it once and then we throw it away. There's nothing sustainable about that. And I know this is super anticlimactic, me talking about paper versus plastic and then ending up saying well none of them are sustainable if you only use them once but that's essentially what it's all about the reason why paper utensils for instance can sometimes be better than plastic is if you composted them for instance then they are incorporated into a circular system, a loop, where they can actually do good again, but you cannot do that with plastic. But generally, if you have a reusable, that is way, way better than using disposables. I still prefer cardboard or paper packaging over plastic packaging, even though the CO2 impact of that product might be higher than it is for plastic. But again, a lot of stuff goes into this and generally I feel like a product that can completely biodegrade is always better than a product that lingers as microplastic. It's also not unessential to look at recycling rates. There's a lot more options to recycle paper packaging than there is to recycle plastic packaging. And plastic cannot be recycled indefinitely. So again, as is the case with both glass and aluminium, if this is getting super old, but I would choose paper over plastic any day and if I have the chance to I will obviously choose a reusable product over either. Super super important to mention. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. Leave me a comment down below and let me hear your take on this and uh, feel free to like up this video that would definitely make my day. I hope that you enjoyed it. Take really good care of yourselves and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!